Our overall thoughts are that it is a pretty much a do nothing budget, and particularly when it comes to the biggest crisis that we're facing right now, which is the housing crisis, of course. So, if you're a young person who's struggling to pay your rent, this budget doesn't do anything for you. If you're someone who's worried about never being able to buy a home or your kids won't be able to buy a home, this budget really does nothing for you. And if you're someone who's on the public housing waiting list, which is over 100,000 people in Victoria now, it, the budget does nothing for you. So, we are pretty disappointed that in a housing crisis, when there's been so much talk about housing being the biggest driver of social inequality at the moment, that the budget just pretty much ignores that and it's got not, nothing new for housing. So what, what kind of action, I'll just stick on housing for a moment there, what, what kind of action, action on housing, I guess, were you specifically looking to be addressed here? Well, the biggest thing we need is a huge public build of public housing. So the government used to build public housing for people to live in, and now we're seeing the government here in Victoria demolish all the high-rise public housing and replace it with mostly private housing. And so there's no new money in this budget for public housing, for affordable housing, for social housing, for community housing, none of that. So that was a big disappointment. Also, just nothing for renters. So we had been pushing for new laws to make unlimited rent rises illegal or some kind of relief for renters, a rent cap or something, anything really we're crying out for. And there's nothing in the budget on that either. So that's two pretty big disappointments. There is still an opportunity for the government to do something on housing if they had the guts to. So we're pushing for for example, a cap on Airbnbs. So many cities around the world have this. We've got 48,000 Airbnbs. That's whole investment homes, right? Not just a room, but a whole investment homes, 48,000 in Victoria right now. And they're homes that could be for renters or for people to live in, but instead they're just making profits on Airbnb. So the, the government still could introduce legislation to cap that and to actually legislate to get some of those onto the rental market. So Fingers crossed they actually work with the Greens to do that because that would put a huge dent in the rental market. One of the biggest uh, announcements we've seen is that the sick pay guarantee, that is scrapped. Um, I know the Treasurer, he said that it's one of those COVID-era programs that is just no longer needed at this point. Do you think that's true? Well, it's definitely still needed. This is This is terrible for young people. So many young people in particular, but people of all ages, are casual workers. And if you want to take a sick day, well, you can't because you either have to go to sick work, uh, go to work sick, which is not good for you or for your co-workers or for anyone, or you have to stay home and then you don't get paid. So we've completely now lost that safety net. The Treasurer says, oh, the federal government should do it. And yes, we agree the federal government should do it. But is that a reason for the state government to walk away? Because now nobody's doing it, which seems pretty ridiculous and a real slap in the face for young people who are facing increased casualization of their work. We've obviously all seen the, the debt that Victoria is in and all the problems that we're facing there. So just is it something that, you know, the state could really afford keeping that program um, there? You know, again, obviously it had been in place for a, for a couple of years now. Um, as you say, a lot of workers um, were, you know, Guaranteed sick day, obviously, is the name um, suggests by it and sick pay. Um, but, yeah, is it something that the state could really afford in the position we're in right now? Well, the thing is governments could afford to do a lot of things if they had their priorities right. So the state government could afford lots of things if they tax the big banks who are making record profits, if they tax some of the profiteering big corporations like the property developers who are making huge profits. Our society, the pain isn't being spread equally, right? There are some who are doing it really tough. Renters, people who can't afford their groceries because of price hikes. And then there are some like the big banks and the big corporations who are doing very well and have continued to make record profits throughout COVID and post-COVID. And so if governments actually dealt with some of those issues like taxing the big corporations, they would have a lot of money, billions of dollars, in fact, to then build public housing, have sick pay guarantees, all of these things that we need to live a good life. Governments are just choosing not to do those things. Budget is about choices, right? And they're making very clear choices about what they prioritise and it's not people who are in housing stress, that's for sure. Something else, um, the airport rail link, that has been delayed again. It's been pushed back another four years at this point. Um, 
for some, it feels like, you know, we're, we're never going to get it at this point. Um, again, what's your reaction to that and, and what should really be done um, regarding just the whole well, situation? The, the airport rail just seems to have been pushed off into the never-never and this is something that both Labor and Liberal governments have done for years. Promise an airport rail link and then don't deliver it. Promise it, the next government promises and then doesn't deliver it. It's like an episode of Utopia. It's just... Yeah, I think at this point people are just beyond expecting that any government's ever going to build the airport rail link, which is a real disappointment and a shame, right? We've all travelled to other cities around the world that have functioning rail links to their airport. It is not rocket science. It is something that we could have in a modern city like Melbourne, but it feels like no government's actually ever going to do it. Right. Um, Just finally, obviously, as I said before, there are a lot of things um, in this budget, I'm still getting the press releases uh, coming in from the government with all their announcements. Is there anything that the Greens particularly welcome from it? Oh, look, it's it's a bit of a do-nothing budget, actually, because the government is in a bit of uh, strife. But it's just the way that they deal with it is that they don't tax the big corporations and instead they cut services. So there's lots of cuts that we're still finding. We're still going through and finding cuts to environmental programs and climate programs. And I think we'll, there'll be a few days as we search through it and find all of those cuts. Um, and it's just a bit disappointing that they're not taking on some of the structural reforms, I guess. And they're doing, they've hung this little carrot in front of people for a headline in the Herald sign, a $400 bonus for schools, um, for families to pay for, say, school excursions and uniforms. But our kids are still then learning in underfunded, chronically underfunded schools with crumbling classrooms and families can't afford to pay the rent near the school where they go and they can't afford to go buy their groceries. So it feels like the government's tried to dangle this little carrot to say, hey, look at this, everyone everyone with school kids gets $400, but it's not actually dealing with the problems that people are facing. So that's that's the, the disappointing thing, I guess, from our perspective. Um, and then also while they're spending billions and billions on these huge toll road projects that people have been telling them for years are not worth it and are just increasing construction costs everywhere else for things like housing. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a do-nothing budget, I have to say. All right. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you.